Wow, where do I even begin with this game? The PlayStation 4 is retiring soon, as it ushers in the PlayStation 5, a console generation that will undoubtedly change what a game can theoretically be, and I can't wait. Partly because my PS4 is ready to take off with how loud its fans are, but before the PS4 retires, Sony has one last exclusive hurrah, Ghost of Tsushima by Sucker Punch. The year is 1274, you are Jin Sakai, a samurai on a mission to stop the Mongols and their general Kutan Khan from invading your home, the island of Tsushima, as well as rescue your uncle, Lord Shimura, who was kidnapped in your first attempt at stopping them. Whilst this game is based around the first Mongol invasion of Japan, the story is somewhat fictional, the characters are unique. In the real invasion, the Mongols began by taking Tsushima Island. They were under the command of Kublai Khan, Genghis Khan's grandson. The Mongols fought against a small army of Japanese warriors on Tsushima, led by the So Daimyo family. The local warriors were completely overwhelmed by the Mongols' superior numbers and advanced gunpowder weaponry. Once the Japanese warriors were defeated, the population of Tsushima was massacred. This story does indeed mirror that, but with more of a redemption arc. Originally, the Mongols were stopped by a typhoon, which was later known as the Kamikaze, or Divine Wind of 1274, which is where the word originates. This game is about saving our family and retaking the island by any means necessary, even if it means betraying the honour of the ways of the samurai. I presume the change was because, and no disrespect, I don't think the game would be that interesting if you lost the first battle, a wind showed up, and then the credits rolled. But hey, what do I know? But the wind is actually used in a very creative way instead in this game, which I'll get to later. Throughout my school life, I was never taught anything about the history of the samurai or Mongols. Not having any prior knowledge about the cultures, I'm not one to talk about how in-depth this game goes as a whole, but as an educational game on both sides, it's been wonderful. I've learned a lot more than I expected, and I've even done some research into various elements of the original event. Ghost of Tsushima is a perfect introduction to this massive world that I had no idea about. I've of course heard words and phrases passed around, but this game has ignited a fire where I've yearned to learn more. I think one of the most impressive things to me is that the dedication to displaying the heritage is exemplary. They have clearly researched the history, and when it comes to combat they even brought multiple sword experts on board to ensure the combat is accurate, and that's an impressive feat because there is a lot of diversity in terms of combat. The way of the samurai is to face your opponent head on. To do otherwise is cowardly and brings shame upon your family and the ways of the samurai as a whole. You must never abandon your honour, but with Jin's uncle Lord Shimura captured, you've got to do what it takes to save him, and by extension, the island. And let's face it, that does make this game a lot more interesting. You take on the title of the Ghost of Tsushima, as you learn to be more dishonourable, or, in other words, stealthy in your approach. So, massive confession, I'm not good at stealth. As much as I love stealth games, people who have downed 8 shots of vodka and are stumbling everywhere are more stealthy than I am. There is a feature called Showdown, which allows you to easily take out 1 to 3 of the tough enemies without hassle, whilst also restoring these resolve orbs so I can heal throughout the upcoming battle. And let me tell ya, you, you're gonna need to heal, cause there will be a lot of enemies. But ultimately, this game depends on how you want to play, if you want to be more honourable. If you're not massively into stealth, whilst there are missions that require pure stealth, you don't have to resort to that. But damn is it fun to be stealthy! You are extremely nimble in this game. Jin's mobility is incredibly satisfying. He'll be able to crawl around quickly and even climb buildings with ease to sneak up on our Mongol foes. There's also a lovely little animation of going from full run into stealth sneak, which is a little slide, and I don't know why, but it makes me a little giddy. I just, it's so satisfying to do. As a samurai, you'll be using a katana throughout your journey, but the way you wield it will vary constantly. You may only start the game with the stone stance, but as your journey progresses and you take out more leaders of the various Mongol camps, you'll learn how to make the most of any situation. Stone, water, wind, moon are all different stances you can adapt to take out any type of enemy, and you can change without wasting any time. It's an incredibly elegant system. 
There's one other stance which is extremely cool, but I'll let you discover that when you play the game. You have two buttons for attacking and two for dodging or blocking. Square will be your standard attack to deal damage, and Triangle, whilst able to inflict pain, is mainly for staggering an enemy or breaking their shield. In terms of dodging, Circle will allow you to dodge or dodge roll if you choose to upgrade it, and L1 will allow you to block sword attacks. Time is right, and you can even counter immediately, but each stance has benefits depending on who you're fighting. For example, the Wind stance is fantastic against enemies holding spears, and Stone is great for blocking swords. That said, I love Water Stance's stagger move. If you set it up right, you can get a barrage of hits on your opponent to destroy all of their defences. It's probably my most used stance because of that. When it comes to being a dishonourable samurai, you'll be able to assassinate people by sneaking up on them, but you will also gain a short bow and a long bow as the game progresses, and you certainly don't need to aim for headshots. Let's instead stab the hornet's nest with an arrow and have them attack the Mongols, that is pretty cool. You'll also learn different abilities to help you get out of sticky situations, like throwing kunais at your foes or charm bells to distract them, among many others. You really are given an incredible amount of freedom to tackle any situation how you want to. The terrain also helps with that. If you're feeling overwhelmed, there's nothing wrong with fleeing and looking for places to hide so you can get the jump on them again. But let me tell you, this game gets incredibly intense in most battles. You're fighting an army, a, a very large <laughs> army, and that offers a very unique position of being massively overwhelmed, but also adept to handle the situation. It's simply thrilling most of the time. At the bottom left, you'll notice these little resolve orbs. These orbs essentially let you heal yourself without wasting any time, and are incredibly valuable but you can also use them to deal fierce strikes on your opponent at the cost of more than one. But that's not a problem, as you'll get more as you explore more of Tsushima. And exploring the island of Tsushima is such an exhilarating ability in itself. The island of Tsushima is one of the most beautiful places I've ever visited in any video game. You've been watching thus far, surely you can see that. But take a look at some of the landscapes you can visit. It is breathtaking. And it's incredible just how much there is to explore. From tiny settlements and villages, to shrines, to the gorgeous open lands, it's a game I will enjoy revisiting, just to stare at the serene nature surrounding me. And then a pig shows up and destroys you. These are vicious little bastards, do not be fooled. You might also encounter a hot spring, which can increase your health, and also let you admire Jin's spectacular ass. Get a good look, you'll see it a fair few times. The weather is something that comes into play quite frequently. It can change randomly or fiercely depending on what the situation is, but it's never intrusive. In fact, it adds a lot to the atmosphere of the entire island, especially the bosses which are always within spectacular set pieces. But now, I think it's time to talk about wind. As I mentioned in the very beginning, a typhoon is the reason the Mongols failed originally. In this game, wind is your guide to the location you're looking for. You can set waypoints, and instead of having an intrusive map on the corner of the screen, you just slide your finger up on the touchpad, and wind will guide you in the direction you need to go. And I think both thematically and visually, this is one of the most impressive things about this game, and it's something I think a lot of future games should take inspiration from. It's absolutely beautiful. As you travel the world, you'll be noticing many items that will help you improve your weapons and armour. There's one piece of armour that helps you track down secrets around the world by making your controllers vibrate pulse, which is pretty handy. You'll find a lot of flowers on your journey, which don't do too much in terms of making your journey easier, but it will allow you to change the colour of your clothing, which is a very nice touch. Within this game, much like other open world games, there are main quests and side quests, except in this game, these quests are called tales, which I think is beautiful. Though I do find it funny that when you complete a tale, the tale gets Thanosed and flies off screen. It is very easy to get distracted in this game. Not that that is a bad thing at all. None of the quote-unquote side tales are afterthoughts. They each have a purpose, and they are absolutely worth doing as you're in the middle of travelling, because they'll probably help you take you in the right direction anyway. There are mythic tales, which can unlock new abilities, which are incredibly helpful, but also completely missable, so those are definitely worth doing if you stumble upon them. 
What I also love about this world is that you can discover the location of tales in some cases by word of mouth. A person in a far off village will have a friend or will have heard a rumour and that will tell you of a tale somewhere on the map to travel towards. And each tale actually tells you what the reward is before you take it on. So if you don't think the reward is worth it right now because you want to pursue moving the story forward, this can help make your mind up. Honestly, this is so helpful and something I hope other games choose to copy. The Mythic Tales begin by telling a story with ink animation, and it is such an enchanting way of telling the story. It's touches like this which make every quest matter. The gameplay rarely feels stale, but if you're going to add a tale or quest for the sake of adding one, create some flair like this and I will be all over it. This game personifies beauty wherever you go, and I can't get enough of that. And I suppose that leads perfectly to arguably the most beautiful thing about this game. Petting the fox! You can pet the fox! You can pet the fox! Okay, it's, it's not, it's not that. I love that, but it's not that. But instead, it's the photo mode. At any point, you can press right on the D-pad to go into photo mode, and this photo mode has some of the most diverse features I've ever seen. Look at this list! From changing the weather to having different petals and fireflies and wind fly across the screen, to changing the atmosphere and focal points, there is no restriction in creating a gallery of pure art within this game. And you've been seeing some that I've personally made as I've been talking about it. This game is exceptional. Mainly because there's a secret behind a waterfall, and I love me a good secret behind a waterfall. But besides that, there's so much to do in this game, and there's way more than what I've mentioned already. I haven't even gone in depth about how it has both English and Japanese dubs, and even a black and white mode as a tribute to Japanese filmmaker Akira Kurosawa. There's a grapple to add more depth to the movement and a bunch of short but sweet platforming segments. You can fast travel to anywhere you've visited, and there are birds that will show up, and if you follow them, they will lead you to locations you've not discovered yet. And let's not forget about the charms. Discovering fox shrines allows you to equip more charms, and they can give you benefits, like it's easier to stay undetected, or you can collect more items for crafting than usual, as well as much, much more. Yeah, I think you can see why this game is pretty extraordinary. Ghost of Tsushima is satisfying from beginning to end. I found the game pretty challenging, but a good challenging. I rarely got annoyed, because my mistakes were my own. I may have struggled more than others, because as I mentioned, I am bad at stealth, but it is a fun, beautiful experience. If all of this appeals to you, pick it up. Sucker Punch have given the PlayStation 4 the perfect send-off. Now, we look to the PlayStation 5, where new worlds, new experiences, new possibilities await. I cannot wait to take this journey alongside you all. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, share the video around. I also have a Twitch, a Twitter and a Patreon if you'd like to support me and the channel. Also, click that notification bell, it does help. So, I want to give a massive thank you to Sony for giving me a review copy of this game. It is absolutely phenomenal and I think you can tell that from how I've been talking about it and what you can see of the game. It is just an absolute joy to play and I'm gonna, I didn't get every single tale done but I'm gonna, it's so good! So tell me, are you excited for this game? What about it excites you? What are you looking forward to doing most? I, I yeah, which playstyle are you going to adapt? I would love to know. Also, I want to give a massive thank you to Rhett Gallagher for being a tremendous supporter on the Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>